If you'd like to know how to paint this stunning contemporary orchid in watercolour using just six colours, then stick around. So as usual, I begin by tracing down my line drawing like this, and there is a free traceable line drawing for this with the reference photograph in the Facebook group, details of which I will put in the description box below. Let's do a quick supply run through. The colors I'm using are yellow, scarlet, cool pink, purple, French gray, and indigo. Uh, but if you don't have these colors, use the nearest that you have, and I'll explain why a little later. So I'm using mixed media paper today and all the materials will be in the description box below. So we're going to start this painting by working wet in wet. So I have two puddles on my palette here, one of which is just plain water and the other I'm adding French grey. Now if you don't have a light grey tone, you could use a really, really watered down version of any black that you have. This is just going to form the base colour of our orchid. So to start with, we're working wet on wet and I'm applying just plain water to each petal where we want to drop the paint in like this. And you'll continue the same process on the other petals. Once they're dry, I've cleaned out my palette and I'm going to add just three drops of water to my palette like this. The first one is going to be cool pink and I'm mixing this to sort of medium consistency here. Use whichever pink that you have within your palette that's quite vibrant and again a purple colour like this and we're going to be dropping these in one by one. Again, wet in wet. So the third puddle that you see on my palette is just water and I'm using my number six size spotter just to grab the water and drop it into the dried grey paint like this and we are going to drop in the two colours, the cool pink and the purple, uh, once this has dried just a tiny bit. This will mean that we have a really soft blur. So you apply the water only where you want the paint to go. So using a smaller brush, this is the number two size spotter, but again, just use the brushes that you have. And I'm dropping in these, uh, these paints into this damp paint, damp water, and you can see how it splurges into this really natural looking blurred effect. And just switching between the two, paying attention to the reference photograph. As I said earlier, we will put the reference photograph and the line drawing in the Facebook group and I'll put details of the group uh, in the description box and do consider joining us there where you can post your finished paintings and get some feedback if you want to. I'm just using the residual paint on the brush to go into these smaller areas and this will be all wet and dry so that we have a little bit more control. I recommend that you watch this video all the way through so that you can see the watercolour layering process and watch it come together, pushing through that kind of awkward stage that you get with watercolour. Sometimes you think that it's wrong, but actually, if you carry on going, you'll see how it comes together. Once the colour is dry, I clean my brush and pat it on some kitchen towel like this. And with a damp brush, gently merge the colour into the paper like this. It gives a really soft edge and it gives you the uh, opportunity to sort of move the paint around a little bit if you need to. So we're going to be building up this watercolour with various layers. So layering watercolour and watercolour glazing whereby we paint another colour on top of a colour that we've already applied to give it a different shade. It really works well with botanical art or botanical painting. So I'm continuing the process here on the other petals, exactly the same, applying the water and then just dropping in that paint.
So as we hit the petal on the other side, you'll see that there are two splodges of colour. So again, we're going to do these wet in wet because it just gives that natural blur. So once again, add the water where you want the paint to go and drop in the purple and pink tones like this. You can mix them up, it doesn't really matter as long as you have some sort of depth of colour on there and a little pattern that you can work with a bit later on. Remember that these are just our initial washes and they will be built on as we progress through the watercolour painting. Here you can see me using a flat synthetic brush just to blend the colours together and tidy up any of the untidy edges. So now I'm mixing uh, the yellow tone. This is actually like a cadmium yellow and two petals here. To one I'm going to add a tiny bit of the cool pink tone to make it into a really weak um, watery orangey kind of yellow tone here. Um, you want the colour to be um, very watery so add a lot of water and start to apply it to the centre like this, staying out of the areas that are white and also have that little bit of a grey tone. So just Keep an eye on your reference photograph and just blend in the paint to the paper like this as I'm showing you here with this damp brush. So I said at the beginning of this tutorial that use whatever colours you have and I say this a lot because colours vary considerably from brand to brand. Um, for example, these paints I'm using today are by Munio and the colours are very different to the colours of the same name by a brand, say, Windsor & Newton. So they do vary quite a bit and also I have chosen these colours because I want everybody to join in with these tutorials. Very often I hear people say that they've listened to a tutorial and they may have to have such and such a colour and you may not have that within your palette. So use the nearest colour that you have. Now I've created a colour chart that I find really, really useful and I'll put this in the information card on the top of this tutorial so that you can see how I match my colours to the photograph. So you don't have to have the colour that I'm saying just use the colour that you have within your palette. So you can see me just dipping in between the plain yellow colour and the yellow with a tiny bit of pink. Again, just looking at your reference photograph. Now I'm going to be mixing um, some cool pink here with some of the yellow tones. So you want to have a bright sort of orangey colour here and applying it to the central part like this. Today I'm using mixed media paper and I've said this quite a bit, I really like using it for watercolour because it makes the kind of blending process um, a lot easier. So again, use, use what you have and what you like working with. This is kind of just a, a smoothish surface, so it does make the blending process quite easy. So if you have difficulty blending your watercolours, then maybe you want to try something a little bit different like this. So I've chosen this orchid composition because it really kind of jumped out at me. It's a photograph that I took some time ago and I thought it's a really lovely kind of contemporary botanical painting which I know many of you like to paint so I really hope that you enjoy painting this one. Now you can see me strengthening up this, um, this orange tone by adding pink and yellow and this brighter tone will go in the centre like this.
so now that everything's dry you can see I've mixed this really dark purple color by mixing um, indigo a bit of everything indigo yellow pink to get this kind of vibrant dark mix and you want the paint to be thicker at this point you don't want it to be kind of watery as before but it's really important that the paint is movable you don't want it to be a dry wash it has to be kind of gloopy that's a, a good adjective to describe it sort of it it needs to be movable but um really really dense in color you can see me using a smaller brush to apply it here again paying really close attention to the reference photograph so going back to the burgundy mix we have purple I think a bit of indigo a bit of pink and a bit of yellow of course if you do have a color like uh, magenta within your palette you could use that And you can see me here as always once I've applied that paint cleaning my brush in in cold water and just patting it dry on the kitchen towel and blending it like this and you can see just how I'm wiggling the brush to create a sort of texture within that petal by using sort of circular motions to pull that paint where I want it to go it's all about control when you paint wet and dry you have full control of your paint application so we're sort of going through all the watercolor application methods here So just dropping in this burgundy color here and you can see how I'm using the brush to kind of pull it around to create the illusion of this petal being not flat. So you want it to look three dimensional and by creating this curve you can see how it makes you think that this petal is curved like this. So once again blending it into the existing dry wash. and just dropping in the other colors like this. I'm using my number six brush to just add a plain water glaze to this and I'm just using a really really light touch what this will do is it will help all the colors merge together and just give it a sense of uniformity so that we can build up on these colors once they're dry
and I'm just using a damp brush with a tiny bit of pigment on just to create the shape of the pink tone like this. Gently merging the colours together and pulling off some fluff from my brush. Using the very tip of my brush to work around the centre. So now that these little splurges of colour are dry, we need to just make them a more intense shade. So once again, I'm applying some water to the colour and just dropping in the same colours as before. So we have the purple tone. And now we're adding some of the burgundy just to darken it up. And you can see how we have that natural splurge. You kind of want it to smudge out into that existing layer so that it looks really sort of soft and blurry. So you can see how I'm just using the tip of my brush to pull that colour into that damp paper. Uh, now that it's dry, I'm just using the tip of my spotter brush just to create a soft edge by pulling and dabbing the paint like this. So I'm using the burgundy mix with a zero size brush to sharpen up the base of this petal here. You can see that by outlining the petal, it really sharpens it up and again, soften that inside edge with a damp brush. Just pulling that color really, really gently into the existing paint. And on the other side with a pink tone. And you can see that my paint on my palette has dried a little bit, so it just makes it a little bit easier when you're working with these smaller areas. Using this kind of wiggling motion to merge these colours together as before. And just using my flat brush to tidy up that edge. And you can see how I'm using the existing paint on the paper just to pull up a shape like this. I'm not picking up any more pigment at that stage because I want that shape of the vein to be really, really natural. Going back to the pink mix, I'm adding a tiny bit of yellow here and just to enhance it a little bit and just dropping it into this section here. If you are enjoying this tutorial, you may want to head over to our Patreon site where you can join up for around eight pounds a month, which will give you exclusive content and a more in-depth tutorial every single month. And I will put the link in the description box below. Mm -hmm. 
by the way if you are enjoying this video do give it a thumbs up it really does help to support me more than you realize so just give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing if you haven't already and hitting that bell notification because I do release a brand new video every single Tuesday So we'll just carry on building up these colors as before and just following the pattern that we now have in place. So essentially all the hard work is done and we just follow the application that we already have on the paper building up these colors. Now we have got quite a way to go with this tutorial. Um, I have chosen a, a longer length one to do for you this month. So um, set aside some time for yourself and sit down and enjoy painting. So I've now mixed the grey tone, so I've used French grey and we're mixing it to a slightly thicker consistency to the initial wash and I'm using it to build up some patterns and some veins on the petals like this. Just kind of following the natural curve of the petal. So watercolour does have a kind of bad reputation for being a difficult medium to work with. I say this quite a lot because I know many people are put off by working with watercolour. So if there's anything that you struggle with within your watercolour painting, drop it in the comments below and I'll see if I can help you out with any of your watercolour queries. So here I'm adding the grey tone uh, just to some of the areas within the, the plant as you can see and this is uh, just by paying close attention once again to my reference photograph. We want it to look three-dimensional and not flat. This is why we're adding these grey tones here, to give some depth and form to the petals. And you can see I'm just doing the same thing on the other side of this petal just by sort of wiggling the brush to create this sort of broken line which becomes part of the vein. It's all about building up those watercolour layers just to make them really jump off the page. Some of the pink tone has contaminated the grey colour, but actually it, it looks really, really natural. So if you want to add a tiny bit of pink to the grey, then do that. Just working around these little bits, I don't know what you call them, <laughs> on the bottom of the page here. And just being really, really careful because we want to keep them white. So just working around, negatively painting around them. I'm just adding a tiny bit of the grey colour here to this central part and now a little bit of burgundy to enhance the orange colour that we've applied underneath. Now by blending this burgundy tone into the orange it really makes it look as if that kind of orange colour is glowing through underneath which is why we applied that orange colour first. Now 
I'm just kind of using a pattern motion as I reach the smaller areas. It means that you can get into the corners rather than trying to paint it in as you normally would. So just pat your brush like this. And the same on the other side. Making sure, as always, that you blend your paints. Now at this stage, it's still looking a little untidy, but we have got um, some more work to do on this painting. I'm just enhancing this bottom section here with a little bit more yellow and working around these little bits here. And some of the orange tone on the top. I really must learn the names of the plant, the parts of the plant. I've added a tiny bit of water to the palette. I don't know whether you can see this little drop that I've put on the left hand side here. And I think I mentioned it at the beginning. The reason I do this is rather than dip my brush into a jar of water when I'm doing tiny, tiny areas, it just means that you have um, not too much water on the brush. That's a little tip there, just if you want to put a tiny bit of water on your brush. It really does help. And just blur in those colors together with that number six thigh spotter. You can see this is really coming together now. I'm adding a tiny bit of grey to this section here and then I'm going to drop in a little bit of yellow just to take away the whiteness and give it some shape and form.
So once again today we've used a really limited palette. In fact, I don't think I used the scarlet that I mentioned in the beginning. But if you have anything like that, like a bright orange color that you want to add, if you have got a lot of colors within your palette, then do go ahead and use them. I just wanted to try and simplify the process for you if you haven't got an awful lot of colors within your kit. adding a bit more pink and a bit more indigo to this burgundy color and now I'm using a zero size spotter to really sharpen up the edges. I really love the sharp edge of the paint against the white of the paper. It really makes it kind of jump off the page. So you can see me here just doing this kind of dab in motion again to sharpen up those edges. Using the pink and purple tone, I'm now going to drop in a little bit more colour to this petal on the left hand side where I felt some of the blurring, we have lost some of the colour. So now we're just dropping that back in to enhance the colours that are there already. By doing it this way you get a really strong colour without the colours going muddy. It's really important that you have all your tonal values when you're watercolour painting or indeed any painting so that it looks realistic. You don't want your painting to look flat. So by adding these different tonal variations it really brings it to life. So completing the process on the other side and now I'm adding again the really soft grey pink tone and just applying it where I feel it's needed. So all I'm going to be doing now is sort of flitting between all the colours on my palette and bringing this beautiful orchid to its conclusion. So we've still got a little bit to do, but I'm going to be quiet and let you enjoy the process. <laughs> 